Without the print, what the hell do you got? Why do you do the photography? You make a print. Basically, I am a landscape photographer. But in this particular group, I'm going to show you something I focused in on, which was the sunflower. It reminded me a little bit of the sun itself burning its way out from the center. Funniest thing happened. I heard music over the radio once, and it struck me. The classical stuff hit me as pure sound at a very early age. Then it became a part of my life. Every now and again, the sun will get eclipsed. That's a rather lovely image of backlit. I like that little aura. Grandma used to come and she'd line up the kids or the parents and snap their picture. So I just walked up to her and asked her, what's that? And said, it's a picture taker. Box brownie, they call it. I want to do that. It's about the age of 12, I came into a few dollars and I thought, now it's my chance. I'm going to go buy myself a camera. I set up a dark room in my basement and I started developing my own roles. So I had music, photography, both of them said, you have to play with us, think about us, work with us. And I did both. While the prints are washing in the dark room, I'm upstairs practicing the piano. So I did photography for a living during the day and music in the evening. And the army grabbed me. It was the Korean conflict. So what do I pull? I pull Presidio San Francisco as a musician. There I meet Benjamin Chin. He puts on some music and on the walls were these magnificent prints. I said, who is that? Ansel Adams did that landscape. I said, who's he? You don't know Ansel Adams, the greatest landscape photographer in America? I said, I never heard of him. Do you know Edward Weston? Do you know Imogen Cunningham? And he had all the West Coast photographers on his wall. He said, I've been a student of all these people. And then one evening he said, Capa Negro, want to go to a party? A bunch of photographers are going to get together. And he said, wear your civilian clothes. I'll pick you up at the barracks. So we knocked on the door. Who opens the door? Mr. Ansel Adams. Invites us in to his studio, which are lined with these magnificent prints and there's a bunch of guests. It's a going away party for Minor White. He's leaving the California School of Fine Arts, taking a job at George Eastman Museum and Rochester Institute. So Benny introduces me to all these different photographers. Ansel Adams plays the piano for us. And Benny brought me to Minor White. He said, if you ever get to Rochester, young man, look me up. Two years later, I was out of the army and I'm gonna look up Minor White. Minor's real gift was getting the student to do an internal meditation and pick up that in this print that you have created, you have projected your emotions in one way or another. So that was my task to find out how does that happen? How do you put feeling into chemistry and silver emotions? It's been my job ever since. So the black and white pulls it just far enough away from the literal so-called real world to begin to inject a little more emotion or psychological activity. But I have no computers. I know nothing about that technology. Wet process, chemistry, silver prints. The rest lives over at my son's place. If you had a really good arm, my father's house is a stone's throw away from mine. <laughs> it's just through the woods. There are enough trees so that if he's up late at night, his lights don't wake us up, and more importantly, his Rachmaninoff doesn't wake us up. I thought twice before getting into photography because my father is so accomplished there. And part of my job is to take that influence and transform it into my own authentic response. Running white deer, it's just an unusual situation in Ireland. I waited patiently. I thought, well, the deer are gonna, they're just gonna disperse. One deer took the lead and they all followed him. And I thought, unbelievable. Now the Irish light is rather soft and it was toward the end of the day. So I was not able to get enough exposure to use a speed that would stop the action of the deer. So that's why the deer are moving. It turned out to be quite a magical image. I used to bring fruit and vegetables back to the apartment and make these still life setups. And I set up a bowl of fruit and this one apple kind of stuck out and I thought, 
Yeah, we'll do the whole bowl, but then focus on that apple. But in the process of making the prints, some of the proofs were darker than others. And I saw the darker one suddenly made the apple submerge in the print and this starry sky appeared, just like my running deer. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> just, I was only there to recognize it. What's so great about a print? Prints do many things. They fix a certain scale, a certain interpretation. Prints persist. Prints hang around. And you have this relationship with them, a life. You live with them. And this would be in its last stage. That is a dead sunflower. And I got a real surprise because this eye looked out at me. So in its death, it's become another dimension. For me, legacy is very important. I want the things that I make to last. I want the things that he makes to last. When you make that kind of contribution, you would like it to be enduring. Good work. That's my legacy, good work. Seen through the eye of what I like to call myself an artist. Willing to bear his soul. Willing to seek spirit. So if that has come into my work, that's what I want to preserve. I love my father's work. He has a particular sensibility for light. He's one of the few people that I see really using it to its fullest expression. I'm talking about the emotional tone, the place that light can transport you to. It's almost as if light is music for him. How can you tell a Caponegro print? The print itself will tell you. But you have to come stripped, naked, not full of ideas, oh, I know photography, and I, oh, I prefer this and I prefer that, and this, this should be this, and drop all that crap and look at the print. And you'll recognize that there's this guy in that silver emotion trying to get a sound like a piano out of it. So people are always fascinated by this relationship, analog, digital, and particularly because of father and son. And there's a desire to see our work shown together. The first show was at the Main Coast Artist and it went out to the George Eastman House and it's been traveling ever since. What really happens is the communication of thoughts, ideas, emotions, soul, spirit. That's the art game. I'm so glad you have a lot of years left and you're gonna do that, all that stuff. I'm gonna slowly melt away with silver. Thank God he's that way. Can you imagine how much tech support I'd have to do if he went digital? You're a good kid. <laughs> Fine boy, fabulous artist.